GBS 022 on Route 2 Mnandi Beach. It's a hot and windy Friday afternoon and the police have just called in Cape Town's Forensic Pathology Service Team to assist at a crime scene. Dr. Sasha Maestri responded to the call. She says identifying the body is the first priority. From what the investigators' officer said, the clothing looks like a match, but obviously we'll do DNA. If we still have facial, then that will be also fine. We can use fingerprints. And then the body does show signs of decomposition. Now, a body in an open field like this, obviously estimating time of death will be quite difficult, but we'll do the best we can. This body joins a queue that will now go into the forensic system, where it will stay until all legal requirements have been met. And this can take some time but the Salt River Mortuary is under severe pressure to handle an ever-increasing workload. Wayne Mitten is the facility manager. This facility was built in 1957, so it's basically almost antique. And obviously the, the population in Cape Town was a lot less than what it is at the present moment. It wasn't designed uh, uh, for the processes that we're actually utilising it. Spearheading the development of a new forensics facility is pathologist Professor Lorna Martin, who heads up UCT's Division of Forensic Medicine. The Salt River Mortuary is really old. It's not uh, conducive to operational flow. Um, it's so old that all of the repairs that we continue to do just don't, they don't cut it. The plan is to develop an all-new Forensic Pathology Institute, or FPI, which will be a joint venture of the University of Cape Town and the Western Cape Provincial Department of Health. In replacing what we have already is also, go, is also building for the future. Um, because it's a building that's going to stand for 20 to 50 years, because the crime rate is increasing, because the population is increasing, and because for the past five to ten years the space in which we are in is not big enough, we obviously are building something much bigger. The FPI will provide facilities for both forensic pathology, which determines the cause of death, and forensic science, which will provide DNA and toxicology results. These tests are currently done at laboratories countrywide. At the moment we rely on the Forensic Chemistry Laboratory, which is a national health laboratory. There are only three of those in the country. So if we were able to do this ourselves, then instead of having to wait for months to years for us to be able to issue completed reports, we could do it immediately. Dr. Linda Liebenberg says that the current situation is proving frustrating for everyone. I can't think of any doctor that will send off a blood sample of a patient and wait for several years and be happy with this situation. The Salt River Mortuary has long been unpleasant for grieving families to visit. Wayne singles out the identification room as one of the worst aspects of the Salt River Mortuary. The, the view room is very it's impersonal. We've tried to make it look better, um, but you, we, we deal with a lot of family members. Sometimes they're so traumatised they will pull the curtains down, they'll try and get access to the deceased. So in the new facility we've designed viewing rooms that um, allow for all of that to happen. The family doesn't actually have to walk anywhere. They'll be interviewed um, at a table in an office and then they'll just step into the, into the viewing room behind them and they will see their loved one in a much better circumstance than happens at the moment. The mortuary's outdated physical layout, ventilation and drainage systems could expose people to possible health problems and an uncomfortable odour for personnel. From base level hygienic standards, working where I can do my job without having to dodge sprays of water, sprays of blood, I don't even want to think about all the bacteria and viruses that I have to dodge. The Salt River Mortuary currently processes more than 3,000 bodies a year. 85% of these are unnatural deaths, meaning homicides, suicides or fatal accidents. Of these, 60% are murders. At the moment what we've had to do at Salt River is to take a container and uh, park it in, in an area which is not affixed to the building and kit it out as a refrigeration space. The plan is also to cut down on the waiting time for both families and the criminal justice system. By being able to do this ourselves, we'll be able to provide 
ourselves with a, a result straight away so we can actually formulate a cause of death, formulate our opinions, finish it off, sign it off, hand it over to the inquest magistrate or hand it over to the criminal court. Um, but we'll be able to do this within a week as opposed to two and a half, eight years. Boniwe Cecheka of Kailicha has had first-hand experience dealing with the Salt River mortuary. Boniwe's daughter Ntsiki disappeared without trace in 2010. Because I remember last day I saw Tsiki. Tsiki was so close to me that day. I come from work and then she was at home. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they, no one seen Tsiki. We started to look each and every hospital to the mortuaries. I don't know which place I didn't go and look for her. A year after Nsiki's disappearance, her badly decomposed body was discovered in a neighbor's refuse bin. Her family anxiously waited while pathologists struggled to identify her remains. It was hard because, you see, when I go to the mortuaries, I have to see the unknown persons. And then I take that thing to me as if that was Nsiki, and you see, but I said at least that mother is going to be, at least she's got the, the daughter, she's going to bury the, wonder, where is my daughter? Where is my? The length of time it took for pathologists and next of kin to get conclusive results added to the Chacheka family's emotional burden. We had to go to, to take the, the blood test and then it was me, my husband and my eldest daughter. But they said no, they can't find nothing. We're going to be able to do some DNA testing. Now at the moment we send those to the forensic science laboratory with the police, but again they also have backlogs and there is a waiting period. So some families wait six to eight months just to hear whether or not that person who they know is that person, is actually that person. They take too long because we try as a family, we put a pressure to the DNA people to, but they said we can't make quicker than this. Maybe you are, you are going to wait for six months, but we said no, we can't wait for six months. For me to have to say to a mother, I can't uh, release this body, I can't do that until I've got scientific evidence. And for that mother to wait for months, for me to be able to do that is, is untenable. The criminal justice system also suffers when forensic science is not done accurately and timelessly. Advocate Corinne Tunison is a senior state advocate with the Directorate of Public Prosecutions. Forensic evidence is very important um, and very powerful because if you have the chain of evidence intact from the crime scene to where it goes to the lab and being analysed, that result is then very difficult to dispute in court. The other thing with the Forensic Pathology Institute, which has big laboratory spaces, we can do things like mock-ups of crime scenes. So, for example, for wound patterning, we could satisfy ourselves straight away that this particular wound is consistent with what we think it is and then go and find that implement. You know, it's not unheard of, of forensic pathologists walking around hardware stores trying to find what we think is the weapon that we saw in the mortuary. Um, but now we'd be able to provide a space where we could test those theories. Dr. Maurice Haynes of UCT's Division of Forensic Medicine is setting up a curriculum for pathology students who will be trained at the new facility. She says the new pathology institute could have implications for forensics across the continent. There's no current institute like this in Africa. And at the moment we are getting inquiries from other African countries who would like to send the, either police officers or the scientists to come and learn about forensic science here in South Africa and then take it back to their country and apply it there. The techniques and skills developed in Australia or America or UK is not necessarily applicable to us. And we need to come up with science and research that is applicable to our situation. At the moment we have a budget of approximately 120 million rand and we've got enough money for what we've called phase one. It doesn't include the phase two which is all of the laboratory spaces. So the things that 
I feel are going to make this an institute as opposed to just a operational mortuary, that's where we're, we have a shortfall at the moment. The FPI is poised to be more than just a mortuary. It will allow for the pathologist to be trained with the latest technology and expertise, which will help investigators and the courts. <laughs>